Hi there. My name is Keith Bell. I'm the pastor at New Life Christian Fellowship here in Thunder Bay. Thanks for joining with me. And I pray this would be a time of encouragement and reflection as we look at the Word of God. This is the second Sunday in Advent, and um, it's an invitation to participate in um, the theme today of, of faith. You know, as compared to an invitation to, um, I want to invite you to, to be participants in faith rather than to be um, people who just watch faith, sit in the bleachers and, and watch the faith games live. Uh, we need to be on the field and we need to be active. You know, as we read this passage, um, it is one that we've heard time and time again throughout the Christmases, but it's a way to uh, remind us that faith is what makes us, makes our religious experience so unique, so different. You know, Hebrews 11 um, challenges us that faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It's the evidence of things we cannot see. And through their faith, the people of old days earned a good reputation. And then in verse 6, we read, it's impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. You know, it's this blend of faith and hope that Isaiah leads us into the message today. Uh, last week we were looking at the expression of hope uh, as found in Isaiah 9 verse 1 to 2. And the freedom that you and I have to, to walk, uh, walk into the light and, and not stay in darkness but um, grow in the light and enjoy what he has for us. You know, today you're challenged to have the faith to believe that God is doing something new out of something old. Now, does that sound like the Christian life? Uh, he takes your old self and he renews you, he transforms you. Now, it's a picture of baptism where you're buried to the old self and raised in newness in Christ. So, let's read Isaiah 11, verses 1 to 5. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance or make a decision based on hearsay. He will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word. And one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. You know, we're, we're told from this passage that um, the old root provides the basis for, for growth from the old stump so that fruit can be experienced. You know, there's several types of nourishment or roots that I see happening in this passage. Uh, let's examine uh, what they are. You know, we, we begin really with a historical root. Um, Isaiah says that um, out of, uh, literally out of Jesse, uh, the, the line of Jesse will come uh, something new. You know, um, there's something from this human root that the Messiah is linked to. And he's come to save Israel. There was not much left in a stump. Isaiah says from a stump, God is able to grow a new branch because of the old root. You know, do you have faith to believe today that God can grow a new branch out of an old stump? You know, maybe some of you have uh, practiced that in your uh, house. Or you've seen it where you've cut down a tree or uh, a shrub and the root just doesn't want to stop growing. And it sends up shoots, and, and it tries to grow even more. You know, that, that's the picture that I'm getting from Isaiah, is that um, an old stump, we've got to believe that God is able to cause new growth happen. You know, uh, and really what's interesting, it depends on the root. It doesn't depend on the stump. It depends on the root. It depends on something you cannot see. 
But you have to believe by faith that it's a good root and that God can provide nourishment to grow. And not just grow, but develop a new branch and bear fruit. So we have a historical root, but I see that there are spiritual roots that go deep. Isaiah says that the Spirit of the Lord, you read the Spirit of Yahweh is upon him. Then he lists out six attributes of this spiritual root that provides nourishment. Nourishment, not just, and you'll hear me interchange, it's talking about Jesus, yes. But what about you and I? I think that we get nourishment. And there's a spirit of wisdom, there's a spirit of understanding, a spirit of counsel, a spirit of might, and a spirit of knowledge, and a spirit of the fear of the Lord. The spiritual root has six. A six-fold ingredient list for providing nourishment for this new branch so that it can grow and bear fruit. Isaiah groups them together in three pairs, and so it's helpful to look at them that way. Firstly, you have the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of understanding. You need wisdom to be able to look at a situation and grasp the issue and understand what's going on. And this understanding really literally is the common sense how to proceed. What does it take to discern and to do in response? Jesus had that wisdom and understanding. He knew that when the Pharisees and Sadducees were questioning, he understood how to navigate their questions and to deal with them. He, he understood, he had, he had wisdom when he looked at his uh, disciples, the apostles, and he... Uh, he understood their needs as fishermen, as, as just men, people that needed to be affirmed. Then Isaiah talks about there's this spirit of counsel and the spirit of might. You know, you, have, you may have great might. You understand that, that might and counsel come together because to have one without the other, the might gives credence to the council. Jesus had counsel as he looked at the, at, the, at the leper and he had the might to heal him. He had the counsel when the, when the woman who had been uh, suffered from bleeding for years touched the hem of his robe. His might healed her, but he had the counsel to turn and say, woman, your faith has made you well. Then the third pair that Isaiah looks at is the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord. And man can acquire great knowledge, but without an understanding and being well versed in, in where that knowledge comes from, uh, we end up lost. Jesus had great knowledge, but he had a, such a fear of the Father and an understanding of respect that the knowledge and the application of his knowledge was always in respect to the Father. Having a fear of the Lord aids in a perspective of all the knowledge that you could ever gain. See, your spiritual root serves you well to cause the new branch to grow. I believe, though, there's more, and, and Isaiah talks about more. We need nourishment, nourishment from um, a good relational root. You know, this section that Isaiah writes he uses imperatives to get the point across. Uh, like literally I would capitalize will. <laughs> he will delight in obeying the Lord. You know, I mean, his concept of, of what Jesus would do, he will delight. You know, we can just focus on he will obey the Lord. That's good religious, you know, I mean, religions around the world. People obey the rules. That's what it is. You, you learn to, to, to genuflect or you learn to, to bow down five times facing east. You, you learn that those, that obedience is important. However, it's got to be delight. And, and this is, this is a, to me, the a faith crux in, in Christian life is that we not just have to obey, we, we need to delight 
I, I, I get tired of people that just uh, delight and, and um, or no, just obey but no delight. It's, it's, it's hard. It's not hard to be stubborn and get stuck in obedience, but it is a challenge to delight in it. This really messes with the enemy. When you actually delight in, in doing what the Word of God says and, and delight in, in being um, a member of the body of Christ. And delight is this motivation. Uh, I couldn't do what I do without delight. And secondly, it says that Jesus will not judge by appearance or make a decision based on hearsay. You know, we've got to grasp the, the fact that the Lord does judge. That's true. It says, he, he will judge, but he will not judge by appearance. He's not swayed by what he sees. See, it's like the, the stump and the root. You can't see the root, but you see the stump, and people would pass by and say, it's dead and gone. Yeah, how many people have looked at your life and said, oh, you're dead and gone. There's nothing to you. You know, but they can't see the spiritual root. You know, I mean, it's important God does not judge based on what he sees. But he also says he's not going to judge based on hearsay. In other words, rumor or gossip. You know, that's probably one of the uh, great cancers of our, um, of our society. Of, and when I say of our society, of the church as well. Uh, rumors of gossip. Oh, have you heard? No, come on. I want to know the truth. God does not judge and he does judge but he doesn't judge based on gossip or rumors or by what he sees and thirdly he will give justice to the poor and make fair decisions for the exploited the Lord does give justice to the poor you know in this world there is little or no justice for the poor in fact even the word justice um, brings to mind uh, what goes on at the courthouse they call it the halls of justice, so they call it justice. It's the legal system. What we have created is a legal system. And if you have the money, you can get a really good lawyer and you'll probably either get off or get a reduced sentence. It's not justice, it's a legal system. You know, the great white throne judgment that we see in Revelation uh, is not a legal system, it's justice. There will be justice served. Um, the poor are cared for. You know, um, the poor are important to God. In fact, um, Tony Campolo says that there's over 2,000 references to the poor in the Word of God, and about four or six um, for the rich. Maybe it's eight. But none of them are very nice when he talks about the rich but he cares for the poor. See, we, we develop a relational route, uh, learning how to delight, learning how to, how to uh, n judge, not by appearances, learning to get to know people, but learning to care for the poor. This relational nourishment from the root is so important. It, it, it gets you out of looking at God as only this spiritual thing where you, you, you do all this stuff or know about him. He wants to touch lives. He wants to touch the life and soul of each one of us. God is not seeking just to grow in a branch, but he wants to bear fruit because he wants to impact the world. A life of impact and purpose is before us. This amazing new branch that God is causing to grow up from the stump and has caused the old root to come to life and bear nourishment up through the, the, um, this, this new branch. There is spiritual nourishment, there is relational nourishment coming together to validate the powerful testimony of Christ as the Messiah. You know, again, Isaiah uses three things to, to place validation on, on Christ. You know, the earth will shake at the force of his word. Um, remember, it's his word, not your word. 
but the earth shakes at his word, right? Hebrews 4, verse 12 to 13, For the word of God is alive and powerful. It's sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It exposes our inmost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. And he is the one to whom we are accountable. His word. The world will shake at his word. Not my word, not what I have to proclaim. But You know, I look at Jesus' ministry, it, it shook things up. And then if we were to look ahead and look at what's coming in Revelation chapter 6, verse 12, we read, I watched as the Lamb broke the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake. The sun became dark as black cloth, and the moon became as red as blood. Um, God's not messing around. There is power in his word. There is truth to be brought out. Um, secondly, with one breath from his mouth, he will destroy the wicked. In Revelation 19, verse 15 to 16, we read, From his mouth came a sharp sword to strike down the nations. He will rule with an iron rod. He will release the fierce wrath of God the Almighty, like juice flowing from a wine press. On his robe and his thigh was written this title, King of King and Lord of all lords. You know, um, when the Lord returns uh, with one breath from his mouth, destroys the wicked. What can you and I take from that? You know what? Um, it's like Luke 10, verse 9 and 10. Um, when I encountered the wicked, when I encountered uh, spiritual forces, nothing will harm you. Your word and your testimony is powerful. Thirdly, Isaiah says that he will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. You know, that's really getting personal. Truth like an undergarment. I'm not too sure about you, and some might want to say, well, I'm wearing uh, uh, a certain type of undergarment. God is saying, listen, uh, your special brand of undergarment, whether it's under armor or, or whatever, it is nothing compared to the under armor, undergarment that God is wearing. He's wearing truth like an undergarment. He's, his truth is so close to him. God likes getting up close and personal with you. And he wants you to know that personally, really close to him is truth. Really close to him, he, he, he wears righteousness like a belt, like it's, it's, it's there all the time. In Revelation 19, verse 11, we read, where I saw the heavens opened and a white horse was standing there. Its rider was faithful and true, for he judges fairly and wages a righteous war. You know, our Lord has gone ahead of us, and, and he has this, and, and it's like that revelation just reflects Isaiah's statement. You know, my life, uh, do I keep truth that close to me? Am I willing to say I'm wearing truth as an undergarment? Am I willing to walk in righteousness tight around my, my midsection? That, that, that's what holds my pants up, my shirt in place. It's like, think of it. Get up close and personal. You know, this theme of today is, is is faith. Let's not forget that he wants to instill a greater faith in your life and mine, in all his people, because without faith you can't please God, right? It's a fact. You know, I, I believe Isaiah, what he says, that the family of Jesse, uh, did, he did something in the family of Jesse, and it was manifested in the life of Jesus. Do you believe that? You know, do you believe, or let's say, do you have the faith to believe that he can take your dried up old stump of a life and, and your family lineage and do something new out of it? Oh, well, maybe you're offended, maybe because you have deep Christian roots. 
Maybe you don't. And whether you do or not, nothing is impossible with God. Because he sees below the surface level. He sees the root. And he, he brings life to the root. I've got to allow God's roots that he's placed in my life and not rely on my family, not rely on coming from the family of William or whoever. I have to, I have to let that spirit, the, the spirit that, that Isaiah talks about come alive. And I, I see it reflected in the New Testament. Do I want to have, I want to let the fruit, the fruit of the spirit come alive. Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. I, I, I want to I bear fruit. I want to see the sort of spiritual nourishment that Isaiah talks about come alive. I want to walk in the joy, not just the, the, the fruit that he's given, but with a good motivation. I want to delight in all things that he gives me. You know, uh, Hebrews 12, verse 2, you know, we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. And now he's seated in a place of honor. Yeah. Beside God's throne. Yeah. You and I have a mission. Do you have faith to believe that you have this, the wherewithal to do it? To let God work through you to touch the world around you. I believe that Isaiah's message is not just for revealing Christ, but it's a message for believers to say, this is real. We have a spiritual root. Grow in Him. Don't give up. Only God can see below the surface level. Only God can cause the growth. Let me pray for you. And I pray, Lord, that the truth of your word would come alive in our lives, and that we would allow your spiritual root to nourish us afresh this day. Just like you spoke into the refreshment and what you worked through in Jesus' life. And what you continue to work through in every believer's life that we would turn and allow you, God, to raise up something new out of something that looks dead. I believe that's the message that we see in the gospel. And you raised up Christ in newness and life. You raised him up. You took that which was dead and made it alive. God, I have faith to believe that you can do amazing things. Not just in my life, in the lives of each person that believes and walks with Jesus. Be encouraged this day and give thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining with me and be blessed this day.